الاخوه والاخوات مرحبا بكم في الدرس اللغه الجنه لغه العربيه السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ونعمته وخيره عليكم جميعا Welcome dear viewers to our Learn Arabic show. Right, so I'll just do a recap before starting our topic for today. I'll be doing a recap on what we did on our previous session. Right, so in our previous session, of course, we have still been discussing about the present tense. So we have been doing about we have been doing about present tense and what did we discuss about present tense we dis we started off with the huwa so we started off with third person huwa and of course you all know huwa means he by now you should be knowing right <clears throat> so this is third person he so we started in trying to convert the past tense into the present tense format right so here i have huwa now i want to change this into um present tense now let's look at the past tense first just to recap um what we if, just to show if you remember or not right so in the past tense we have for example i have this is past tense okay um say i have kataba 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 means he wrote right Now I want to change this into present tense. So how will it change in the present tense? What we did was we added a ya, right? The addition was a ya. And where did we add this ya? Did we add it in the beginning, in the middle, or at the end? We added it in the beginning because according to the ruling of the Arabic grammarians, we're supposed to add it at the beginning of the verb right so this becomes yaktubu of course you also notice that this accusative here in the kataba in the ta has changed to nominative here the ta from accusative it has become nominative and here i have added a ya so that's the difference and in our further session because this is just beginner level just the you know the beginner level so i don't want to get into why has it changed from accusative to nominative you just have to know that it changes from accusative to nominative of course not in all verbs okay it depends on the type of the verb and of course um that's how the trends are in arabic basically the arabic grammarians just want to make it sound more beautiful and more eloquent So they have decided to change this um, accusative to nominative. But say, for example, I have fatha, okay? Say, for example, I have fatha. Fatha means he opened, right? So if I'm going to change this into present tense, I'm going to add a ya. Of course, the ya will be added the same place at the beginning. So I'll have ya fatha. But then here you notice the accusative does not change remains accusative. So you see here in this case the accusative does not change into nominative because say if I say yaftuhu yaftuhu does not make a lot of sense right when when I say yaftuhu it doesn't sound really nice of course that's why the arabic grammarians have decided to change to make leave it the same okay so there is not going to be any change right so it's going to remain the same fataha yaftahu okay it's not going to become yaftahu okay so there are you just have to remember these different cases where is it where does it change to nominative um there are also going to be some cases where it changes to genitive and where does it remain the same where does it not change at all and of course we also looked at the special cases like hajja becomes yahjju it changes to genitive farra becomes yafru right because in the holy quran it says if you open your quran it says in surah i think it's surah al arbasa it says bismillah ar rahman ar rahim yawma yafru al mar'u min akhih wa ummihi wa abi and it goes on so it's yafru right and this word yafru comes from farwa which means flee he fled you know farar ho jana you know farra okay he fled right 
So this is what we looked at in our previous session. Now today, I want to look at another pronoun. We're done with hua. Okay, so if I say yaftahu, I'm saying he opens. Yaftahu, he opens. Yaqra'u, he reads, okay. Um, yaqumu, he stands. Yaqulu, he says, okay. Um, yaktubu, he writes, right? So that was the present tense. Now we'll be looking at she. We have, we're done with he. We'll be looking at she. So that's our topic for today. Here in the present tense form, right? Now let's do a recap of the past tense and then we'll convert that into the present tense. So I have the past tense here. Right, now my root verb, as you know, let me use, um, say, nadara, okay? Nadara, this is my root verb. This is my root verb, and what does it mean? It means he saw, and of course, you know, the root verb is always in the hua past tense format, right? So nadara means he saw. Now, I want to say she saw, of course, she saw, I will add a ta, with a sukun on top becomes nadarat, right? And I told you that this is called ta'ut ta'nif, meaning that it represents the mu'annaf, it represents the feminine. So if you see such ta, it represents ta'ut ta'nif, it represents the mu'annaf, right? So this is she saw. Now I want to change this into present tense. So what I'm going to do is, my root verb is nadara, right? So I'm going to add a ta. To this, I'm going to add a ta. But where am I going to add this ta? Am I going to add it in the beginning, in the middle, or at the end? Remember in our previous session, I had told you about the, um, the present tense. Mostly, you will find that additions are done at the beginning, not at the end, right? Because in, if you look at the past tense, additions have been taking place all the time at the end. Nadartu, ana nadartu, anta nadarta, at the end. Anti nadarti, antum nadartum, antuma nadartuma, hum nadaru, huma nadara, for they to masculine, huma nadarata, for they to feminine, right? So all those additions have been taking place at the end. Be it a ta nominative, ta accusative, ta with alif, anything it's been taking place at the end. But for present tense, most of the additions are going to be taking place at the beginning. Yeah, like yam dhuru, right? But here I will add ta at the beginning. So this becomes tam dhuru. Tam dhuru, right? Again here you notice that this accusative has changed to nominative. And again, I have added a ta. I have added a ta at the beginning because ta represents the mu'annath. We'll be looking at a few more examples. Okay, say I have um, qama. Say I have qala. Say I have um, kataba. Say I have qara'a. Right? So I have these um, uh, verbs. These are all my root verbs, of course. Now I will change them to here, present tense, to she, present tense, right? Kama, he stood. Okay? If I want to change it into she sits, I mean she stood, I mean she stands, right? So it's going to be taqumu. So what have I done here? There is an addition of a ta at the beginning. Same with qala. Addition of ta becomes taqulu. Same with kataba. Addition of ta becomes taktubu. Same with qara'a. Addition of ta becomes taqra'u.
the crow. So you notice it takes the same trend. Hajja will become tahijju. Farra will become tafirru. So you notice that this is how um, the, ten, the trend is going to go on and on. It will go on the same way for all other um, pronouns, of course, for all other tenses, of course. However, in some cases, accusative won't change. Some cases, it will change. Um, so that's how it will take its course. Now, let's look at a few sentences, right? Right, so for example, I have Katabat Katabat Ummi كتبت أمي على السبورة Right, so I have a sentence here كتبت أمي على السبورة Now كتبت Here this is تاء التأنيف كتبت she wrote Who wrote? أمي أم is mother But when I say أمي that is my mother, Ummi, okay? Now this ya denotes possession. We'll be learning about possession like my mom, Ummi, my father, Abi, okay? My book, Kitabi, okay? Ya denotes possession. So, katabat Ummi, ala means on saburati, blackboard. So, my mother wrote on the blackboard. كتبت أمي على السبورة. Now you know that these sentences they take the form verb followed by subject followed by object. So what is my verb? كتبة. Verb كتبة. It starts with the verb. My subject we are talking about أمي. We are talking about my mother. So أمي that is my subject. Okay. My object, my object is the blackboard. Now let's look at it word for word. Katabat comes from the root verb kataba. If I add a ta ta'nif, it represents feminine. It represents mu'annath, feminine. So it becomes katabat, she wrote. And the fact that the addition has been made at the end and not at the beginning shows that this is a past tense because all the past tense we have been having the additions at the end and not at the beginning. So this actually denotes that it's a past tense, right? So katabat, she wrote, Ummi, my mother, ala, ala sabura. Now we had said something about the object. Why does the object carry a genitive? Remember in our previous session, we had said this object will carry a genitive. It will not carry an, a nominative, this is wrong, and it will not carry an accusative, that is also wrong. Why? Because it has been preceded by a preposition. Ala is a preposition. And when any object comes after a preposition, the object will carry a genitive. It will become a genitive case. Now, because it has been preceded by a preposition, this object will carry genitive. And of course, you know why I've kept a tashdeed sign here? In our very beginning sessions, we had done that any letter that comes after lam and that is under the category of huruf shamsia will carry a tashdeed sign. And of course, when you pronounce it, the lam is silent. That's why I have not kept a, a sukun there. I have not put any sign here because it is silent. It is not being pronounced, right? So the only thing that will be pronounced is seen. Why? Because if you look at your list that I had given you of Hurufu Shamsiya, the sun letters, we had said the ruling for the sun letters is if any sun letter comes after Lam, the sun letter will carry a tashdeed sign and Lam remains silent. 
So how will I read the sentence? كتبت أمي على السبورة. My mother wrote on the blackboard. Of course, you will not say سبورة تي um, because when you pronounce it, okay, when you stop here, even in Quran, if you've noticed, if you, if you stop and there's a ta marbuta, it will be pronounced more like a ha. If you know, if you come across Quran and the sentence ends with the ta marbuta, you will not say saburati or, or anything like that, right? You will end it with a ha sound, right? So I will pronounce it the way I'll say it. Katabat, ummi ala sabura. My mom wrote on the blackboard. So this was just um, an example to um, show you how these sentences take place. Now I'll be writing for you a couple of tenses and you will have to identify what pronoun goes with what tense, okay? Right, so say I have the tense, um, Say I have the tense Jalasata Say I have the tense um, Katabna Say I have the tense Yaghfiru Say I have the tense nadarat. Okay, nadara we have used it akalat. Right. So I have listed a few um, tenses here. Okay, I've listed a few tenses. We have nadartum, jalasata, katabna, yaghfiru, and akalat. Now what you are going to do is you are going to tell me what pronoun goes with this noun, right? So, you look at the verb. You look at the verb, nadartum. Now try, think in your mind, when you hear the verb nadartum, what comes in your mind? The root verb. What's the root verb? Nadara. Nadara is the root verb. That's the first thing that comes to your mind, isn't it? The second thing that will come to your mind is ta and meem, nadartum. Okay, so you know the root verb now is nadara. Then you have nadartum. So the second thing that comes to your mind is that the addition here has been done at the end. The addition is not in the beginning. And what had I said about the addition being at the end and not at the beginning? This denotes that it is past tense, right? And I have tum. So it will immediately click. Antum nadartum. Okay, so this will be Antum, antum, nadartum. What about jalasata? It will be huma, jalasata. But I'm referring to they to feminine. So this is going to be huma, jalasata. What about katabna? Katabna will be hunna. Why not nahnu? Why not nahnu katabna? Why hunna? Because in nahnu, the katabna would have come with an alif. I would have said, nahnu katabna. We wrote. But th because this is just a noon with an accusative, that will be hunna. Hunna katabna means they, female, wrote. Okay? Yaghfiru. Yaghfiru, um, this comes from the tense ghafara. Okay? To forgive. You know, yaghfiru Allah. You come across this many times in the Quran. Allah forgives. Right? So the addition has been done at the beginning. So the addition being done here is added a ya at the beginning of the tense. So because it's at the beginning, it has to strike you that this is referring to present tense. And of course, it's referring to huwa. Huwa yaghfiru, meaning he forgives. So the tense, uh, the pronoun here will be huwa. What about akalat? I have told you this repeatedly that here we have ta'ut ta'nith. Immediately you see this, this is feminine and it comes at the end, it's past tense. Akala means he ate, akalat she ate. So that is, yeah. So this was just a revision of the past and the present tense that we have been um, doing. Of course, inshallah, tomorrow um, in our next session, inshallah, when we meet, we will be 
covering up more of um, other pronouns. And inshallah, in our next session when we meet, we will also be having a surprise item. So don't forget to tune in, same channel, same time. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.